no, how do we know? You know, we should, we should do the experiments. But the second thing that I say is, well, subjectively, you know, if I look at myself, how could I possibly ever get bored of punting? I mean, what can be better? What can possibly be better in life than just strolling down the river with a beer in one hand and a pole in the other hand? You know, I could live for a million years and I would never get bored of doing this. Of course, some people will not be able to live long enough to, um, to benefit from these therapies. Some people who are already much older than me, for example, much older than you, um, have no chance, really. I am 42. I think I have some chance of living long enough to live forever. But um, I have a good chance that, I, that the science will go more slowly, and so it will not be good enough. So I think that anyone who is interested in living a long time should think very seriously about cryonic preservation. Here's our tanks. Cryonics. There is experimentation now with the possibility that a body might be frozen and revived. If the frozen traveler awakes, what will he find? The advance of science tempts us to speculate on the nature of the world which lies ahead. They told a little bit about the, the basic idea of cryonics, and it just it seemed like a, a great idea. I think it's pretty cool. Like, you die and you come back and you can see whatever happened in the future. For me, I feel like it, it's just a waste. <laughs> You know, maybe I'm, you know, a woman, so that's the way. Cryonics is a procedure by which people are frozen shortly after death in the hopes that the information that is encoded in the brain will be usable in order to reconstitute the person sometime in the, uh, the future. Some people currently only have their heads suspended. It's a cheaper process. It takes less nitrogen boil off to maintain such a thing. But there could be some arguments that they're losing some part of what they are. It is their belief that future science will be able to develop maybe a new body or an android or something. More and more people only go for the head. Not just because it's cheaper, the process is also easier to control. However, how to recover your body afterwards still remains an open question. But there are many examples in nature to make it seem possible. Some animals, like lizards, have the ability to regenerate a limb after it is lost. But in humans also, when a reasonably small part of the liver is cut off, it can grow back. Or when children, before puberty, lose a part of their finger, the finger can grow back to normal if treated well. This indicates that this kind of regeneration is not impossible. It's not impossible because it's being done by nature right now. So if we can simply find those secrets, the secret of the salamander, and be able to find how the salamander regenerates, then we may be able to apply the same uh, kinds of um, amphibian techniques to human beings. Other possibilities. We may have vastly improved bodies. They may be made of metal. Uh, they may be much different than the bodies that, uh, that you're looking at right here. And However, the mind would be the same. And with this mind in a metal body, I might be able to walk around on some of the heavy planets, on Uranus, for example, or on, uh, on, on Jupiter. So that is a, a possibility that's suggested. Another possibility is simply living inside a, a computer uh, to where uh, we're living in a virtual world, a virtual reality. And if that's the case, there's certainly no problem with space. Uh, we'd be able to cram the entire human race into that computer over there. Anyone making this trip knows that it may be a trip that goes on forever. Anyone making this trip knows that it may be the fact that Every single person in suspension, including this dear lady, may never be revived. It's a crapshoot, but we're the only game in town. Ready? Yeah. We're fine.
you guys are not going to get to see the very bottom tank. Yeah, it's the biological. I think that's the biological. I can tell by the weight. Yeah. Sorry. Not there. It seems obvious this is the way to go. Cryonics has some religious aspects in that our heaven, in a way, is the future. And uh, our God, in a way, is technology. Associates suggests a program where you send a bunch of volunteers into the rainforest. And the volunteers are not trained people. They cannot tell an, an endangered plant or animal from anything else. But what they do is they do grab bag fashion. They have shovels and they grab some of this. If they see a plant over here, they grab that. And they get all this kind of stuff. 99.9% .9 of this is going to be junk, but 1% may be very valuable. It may be a, a plant or an animal from the rainforest or some other environment which has previously not been discovered and which will be wiped out unless it's saved right now and saved in the, uh, the, the, the best way that we can. I would love to have uh, whole ecosystems stored in some of the vaults that the American Crime Society is, uh, is constructing in, uh, in out-of-the-way places in order to time machine forward some of the library of life from the 20th century. <laughs>